Hey everyone, welcome back to Pawpaw's Workshop. In today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how to tram your CNC machine. And first, let me define tram. Tram is a term that's used in the CNC world to make sure that your spindle and that bit is exactly perpendicular to the wasteboard. If it's not, you're going to cause problems. Have you ever surfaced a project before carving it and you notice those little straight lines across there and didn't know where they came from? Well, that's because one side of that bit was cutting just a little bit deeper than the other side and that causes those lines. And that's what you don't want. The first thing you should do when you get a brand new CNC machine and you set it up is tram the CNC machine. And you don't need a lot of specialized equipment to be able to do it. You can do it with very simple tools that you have in your shop already. Some people will use a machinist dial indicator to be able to measure within thousandths of an inch to be able to get it accurate. But there's one problem with that. If that dial indicator is very close to the center of your spindle, then it's still not going to be as accurate as if you can spread it out. The greater the distance that you have across the wasteboard when you're measuring your distance, the more accurate that you're going to be. If you surface a project and you're using a bit similar to this, and you notice there's some lines in there, that means that this bit is not sitting perpendicular to your wasteboard or sitting perpendicular to your project. It's tilted ever so slightly. And what that means is one side or the other will be cutting just a little bit deeper than the other side. And when you have the step over and it's cutting, that's when you'll see the lines in your project. And that's what you don't want. That can be on the x-axis or it can be on the y-axis. Either way, you'll be able to see those lines on your project. And you know, then it's time to be able to trim your CNC machine, to be able to eliminate that problem. Before you check the tram of your machine, move your spindle over near the center. And I can just move it over until I'm about in the center. Doesn't have to be exactly in the center, but it needs to be pretty close. And from there, I wanna measure from this point all the way out to the edges in each of the directions on the X and the Y axis to verify that this machine is in fact perpendicular to the wasteboard. One of the tools that I use most often is simply a triangle that you use typically with mechanical drawing. If there's anyone out there using paper and pencil doing a mechanical drawing uh, left in the world, you know what this is. But this is a very accurate triangle that you can sit right here and measure to see on the x-axis if this is actually truly perpendicular to the wasteboard. One of the ways that I've shown to be able to measure that is just with a piece of paper. Because if this is directly right here and then I slip that in, that paper can't go inside of there. That means it's flat all the way across. Well, I want to show you another way using nothing more than a flashlight. Now I'm going to turn the lights down in the shop so that you can see that a little bit better. And to make it even easier, we're going to use a speed square to be able to have it where you can see right down here if there's any light shining underneath this square. Now I have it fairly dark in the shop right now. And you can see there's how it doesn't look like there's any light there. But I want to be able to hold this right against this spindle and then have the light behind it. And if you look, if you look underneath there, there is no light coming out from underneath that square. That's what you want. You know then that this is perpendicular. Oftentimes with the dial indicator, it's only a very short distance that you're measuring. That's not good enough. You want to measure all the way out to the end of your wasteboard. And I can actually do the same thing on the other side. We'll put that right there. Now I'm going to hold this tight right there. And we're going to put the light on this. And there's no light escaping underneath. So that is very, very true. 
And this spindle is completely perpendicular on the x-axis. You can do the same exact thing on the y-axis. So let me show you exactly how to do it. I'm going to take this triangle and put it right along that plate. And then you can slide the paper down because you can't see it all the time. And you can see how the top of that machine is still pointed over to the left. So we need to make an adjustment because that's one of the easiest ways to be able to see it. Don't forget, you can use the flashlight also and see that light shining underneath and between that triangle. So at this point, I'm going to loosen this so that I can move this axis and be able to make the adjustment. Now it's just barely loose, just enough that I can make that movement. And then I can shift it over and then take my wrench and tighten the screws back up while holding it. You got to hold it right in place so it doesn't shift again. So I'm going to tighten the top screw and that bottom right screw, leaving the other two loose. And then let's check it with the paper again. This time, as you can see, that paper will not slip in between the plate and the triangle. So at this point, we have it square and perpendicular to the wasteboard. So now we can go ahead and tighten all four of the screws. One of the things that I like to do after having everything tight is just check it one last time to make sure that nothing moved. And you can see now that the paper will not slip between the plate and the triangle. Now that we've verified that, and you can see that paper will not slip between the triangle and the plate, now we need to do the exact same process on the y-axis. And I'll take the triangle and put it right up against the plate. And again, we'll slide it down. And you can see that paper slides all the way through right down to the very bottom. So that means we need to tilt this whole gantry forward to be able to get that nice and square also. So that's a problem. So that whole thing needs to rotate. To be able to do that, we're going to have to loosen these six screws again on each side of the gantry. That way, it'll make it where we can tilt it. Now that all six screws on each side are loose, I want to take the triangle one more time, put the piece of paper up here, and then just tilt it forward. And that paper, you can see, will actually stay in position. So knowing that, now I'm just going to take my left hand, pull this gantry forward, and tighten a couple of the screws on the right hand side. That'll hold it in position. Now I want to take the piece of paper and my triangle and try it one more time. Now you can see the paper will not slide between the triangle and that plate. That's what we want. We'll check it at the bottom. Same thing. Good tight fit. So at this point I can continue and tighten all of the screws again. The gantry is now perpendicular to the wasteboard. The good thing about this is it really doesn't matter the make and model of the CNC machine that you have. This process is basically the same for every single machine that's on the market today. The only differences that you're going to run into is perhaps how the different components are attached. And you'll just need to make those necessary adjustments based on the particular design of the machine. But the process itself is exactly the same. What I encourage each and every one of you to do now is go check your machine. Now I'm not going to turn this machine on right now, but this is a waste board that I recently made and I showed you the videos. And I want to check this one. So if you have a CNC machine, get your speed square, get a flashlight, and test this. Run your light right across the edge at the bottom and see if there's any light shining underneath it. And if I hold that tight against the machine and then run that flashlight right along there, you should see no light at all. And that's the case on this machine. If I do my paper test, the same thing will happen. I'm not going to be able to stick the piece of paper under there at any place. It just doesn't go. This machine is completely perpendicular to the wasteboard. I challenge each and every one of you to take the speed square, the piece of paper, or a flashlight and go test your machine right now to make sure that your machine is trimmed to the wasteboard, that it is completely perpendicular to the x-axis and also the y-axis. Please check both. 
If you do that, I promise you, the next time you surface the project, before you do the carving, you're not going to have those little straight lines going across your project board causing a problem. So that surfacing bit will do its job and create a smooth, flat surface. I want to do the same thing with the Fox Alien uh, Vasto. And let's look at this. I'm going to put this right down here. So to shine the light, to see if there's any light escaping underneath, there's none. Of course, you'll have some at the T-Track. But then back at this area, there is no light shining through underneath that speed square at all. So again, that's an indication that the machine is trammed correctly. Well, I hope this video has helped you and be able to clarify what tramming of the CNC machine actually is and how to do it. And I hope that you will accept the challenge and go test your machine right now to see if your spindle or your router is actually 100% perpendicular to your wasteboard. I hope that it is. Once you have the tramming complete, that's the time that you want to actually surface your spoil board. That's the best way to, to ensure that you're not going to get those little lines going across your work. It's going to make a world of difference in how your projects carve. So if you like this video today, please, by all means, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the next video. So for now, Bye-bye, and I can't wait to see you real soon in the next video. Got a lot coming, guys. Got a lot of videos that are in the works. You're not going to want to miss out. I do hope you take the opportunity to be able to subscribe right down there so you won't miss out.